everybody and a very warm welcome back to yet another episode of Hidden Jewels of Gospel. As you can hear it, I'm still fighting my flu. It's now week number three and once again there is no sign of any improvement. So maybe my flu is here to stay. Maybe we work out an arrangement, something like this. So maybe in one week you only give me headache and the next week um, only uh, throat problems. So we will see how that works out. Anyway, I wanted to show you three records because I need something to lift my spirits up and I'm just constantly hearing these records and I wanted to share them with you because you get some great, great, great recordings and there are very good available, they are widely available and they are between 5 to 15 euro. While in the meantime my voice is giving up, please bear with me, alright? So yeah, let's get started before we start. Very important note, if you are new to the segment, usually when I'm doing Hidden Jewels of Soul and Disco here, the whole story, you get as many informations as possible about the record, the artist, circumstances around this record. In gospel music, that's a whole different thing. Sometimes, for example, with the Clark sisters, you could write books about the story. And in many other cases, you don't know nothing. Where did they come from? Who was in the choir? Where did they go? So absolutely nothing. So what I decided to do is I'm presenting you three records. I did needle drops from songs from that record. So you get an impression. Otherwise, it's very difficult to find these records on YouTube or somewhere else. And once again, and, and this is because gospel music is so underrated. And I do hope this segment changes it a little bit and you get familiar with some of these musicians and singers because they were tremendously good. So once again, they are cheap and they are great. So let's start, right? With great sister Hagar Trix. He is alive. Look at that lady. When I was in the UK last year, I've seen this record in many, many record stores. And I was like, this, this is a record I'm not familiar with. And I heard it and I was like blown away. So I got this for five euros or five dollar. It's really, it's, it's great and it's available. So why not? So here is the back. What I also found very unique is on many gospel records, you hear or, or see or read. Um, texts from people who were working in radio stations and they're writing about these people. So that's that's pretty good. So you have a little insight and in actually who is this person. And here we have some text from Clemens Panix. And he wrote, first she was a choir member where her singing ability stood out. Her soulful approach was so great that she stood out as a singer among singers. Using the God gift and talents and adding more as she pressed her way, she learned to direct choirs and work with young people to further her service for the master. So from what I've heard that is that she rocked the house. She rocked the masses in the church. So she was kind of a superstar in the church and gospel community. And well, here's the label, the EDH label. Hope you can hope you can see that. So this is in, in very good shape for very cheap money. And I choose for, for the needle drop the first track on the album, which is also the title track, He Is Alive. Let's have a listen. <laughs> Today 
album is when I first saw the cover, I fell in love with it. I love the 70s poetry covers, what they did, which was great. Quite many people did it back in the day. And here we have the soul, the gospel soul of Houston Pearson. I hope I spelled that correct. Or is it person? Anyway, actually, he's a saxophonist and he was more into jazz. And there are quite a few recordings of him available. But in 1978, he decided to do a gospel album and what a gospel album it is it's it's absolutely fantastic this was a 10 i bought the sealed for ten dollars so once again on the back you even get a little interview with uh, from from martha jean and she named him houston so special thanks to martha jean the queen of Radio WJLB and TV2 Detroit, Michigan, who inspired the above notes, transcripted from her Inspiration Time telecast, which featured Houston Pearson, or person. I'm sorry if I spelled it correct. So is anyone having of you this telecast, please let me know. So once again, you get a little interview, so you have some insight. And he says, um, this album is dedicated to my parents, Mr. and Mrs. Houston Pearson Sr. and to congratulations, past and presence of Trinity Baptist Church, Florence. And it also featured the Atlanta Philharmonica and also the Ogligy Tree Brothers, arranged and conducted by Horace Ode. And for the needle drop, I chose Clouds of Joy. <laughs> Oh, 
which is also at the moment my absolute favorite. And this is God's Way by Reverend Isaac Douglas and Friends. And this is, this is a, if you are into soul, this is a must have. You get that for 10 to 15 euros or dollars. Um, on the back you see Isaac, he's, he's a cool cat, right? And he did, he did that album together with the Dynamics. Here's a picture of him at the, with the dynamic and also very young singer Ricky Fowler, which you can see up here. There's some, some liner notes up here once again. And this is, this is an absolutely tremendously good record. It's cheap and it's great. So what does the liner notes say? Ed Gerald in his efforts to spread a little sunshine with his television shows, concerts and special events has taken a giant step forward by producing this unique yet soul-inspiring album that will render you hours and hours of listening pressure. That's true. Um, it's absolutely true. So what else does he say? It's a long text. I'm feeling that my voice is not in the best shape. No less inspiring is the fantastic young Ricky Fowler and the multi-talented dynamics of Baltimore. Remember this introduction for their path to fame is fast approaching and you can say you remember when. The music and words speaks for themselves and the efforts excited are evident. But most importantly, he lives. And this was written by Edwin Hawkins. So if you're into gospel, a little into gospel, you know who Ed, Edwin Hawkins is. So he absolutely knew his game. And this is an absolutely fantastic record. Isaac Douglas did many gospel records, especially during the 70s. So if you have a chance to check him out, do it. You won't be disappointed, especially this one. And I choose for the needle drop, look into yourself. So let's have a listen. Look realistically into Oh, 
Maybe one of these records inspired you to get a little into gospel. Maybe if you go for record shopping and find them in the dollar bins, go and grab them. You will find some great soulful, funky or very sad tunes on it, but they are always top-notch quality. All I can say is that if you were in a gospel choir back then, and I think even today, you really had to sing and these people could sing and they're absolutely deserve every recognition they can get. So thanks for watching, thanks for bearing with me and my boys, and I'll see you next time. Have a great week. Bye.